Hey guys, and welcome back to another YouTube video. So this is going to be the eighth video in my Pi Game programming series. I just want to start off by apologizing for not posting recently. It's been about four or five days without a post, and that's just because I've been very busy. I haven't had an opportunity to record any videos. Um, no excuses though. I'm going to get right back into things and be posting more videos this week. I'm trying to record a bunch tonight so that I have some in case I miss future uploads. Uh, so sorry about the late video here. Uh, but I'm bringing it out for you guys now. So in this video, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be showing you something pretty useful and something you see in a lot of different games. Now I did mention in my last video, I was in this in this next tutorial that what we were going to do is we were going to make it so that our character could collide with the goblin. Now I haven't forgotten about that, but we're going to put that on pause for right now. I'm going to do that in the next video because what I wanted to do is give our goblin a little bit of a health bar. So now that we have our bullets colliding, Let's not stop there. Let's give our goblin a health bar and then we can diminish his health every time he gets hit by a bullet by maybe 10 points, 20 points, whatever, or a percentage, doesn't matter. And then I want to give us some a little bit of score up in the top right hand corner here so we can keep track of how many times our bullet has hit the goblin. Uh, just to add a little bit more to this quote unquote game. Now, if you guys are expecting this to be like a full fledged like platforming game, whatever, that's not the point of these series. The point is to just show you different tips and different ways of programming small games so that you can bring that into making whatever game you guys want to make. Because I can't possibly do a tutorial on the game that every single person would want to make. So I'm just going to do it uh, like this and then hopefully you guys can learn from this and we'll be able to make your own games in the future. So let's get right into the video then. So the first thing we need to do. Uh, if we're going to be giving, actually let's start with the score because this is fairly easy, is we need to display something on the screen. So in that top right hand corner there that I was talking about, we want to display, for example, maybe a number. Um, yeah, we're going to do a number of what your score is. Now you guys can increment this however you want, but for the score, we're going to have to keep track of how many times our goblin is hit. So we're gonna, just going to make a variable up at the top of our program. We're going to set it equal to zero and you can call it whatever you want. I'm going to call mine score. Now, we have this little function here called hit. Now, this is what happens every time our goblin gets hit. So, we're going to leave this for right now. Uh, we're going to do something else in this. But pretty much, once our goblin is hit so uh, a certain amount of times, we're going to make him disappear. And that's what I'm going to do later. So, stick around for that. Uh, let's go down into here. And this is where we call that hit method. So, every time that our bullet runs into our goblin, which we do here, we run this goblin.hit method. And then we delete the bullet, right? So in here, it doesn't matter where, but just in that little if statement, we're just going to increment our score because this means we hit the goblin so we can add one to the score. Now that we have our score and we're incrementing it, we need to draw it onto the screen. So this is where things are a little bit different and I'm going to be showing you something new. So if we want to draw something uh, like text, which is what we want onto the screen in Python, there's a certain way we can do that uh, in, Py in Pygame, sorry, not Python we first need to create a font uh, variable. So do that, you can call it whatever you like. I'm just gonna call mine font because I'm only gonna be using one, but if you had multiple fonts in your program, you'd probably wanna name one like big font, small font, um, italic, etc. whatever you wanted there. And then we're gonna type pygame.font.sys font like this. It stands for system font. Make sure you have these capitals here. And then in here, you're gonna type in the name of your font. I'm just gonna use Comic Sans. Uh, if you want a list of the fonts, you can just go on the internet and search Pygame fonts and they'll come up with all of them. There's a ton of different ones. But if you know the name of the font, just try it in there and it'll probably work. Comma, and then how big the font is. We're going to do our size 30. And then if you wanted your font to be bold, which I do, we're gonna just going to type true. And then if you wanted it to be italicized afterwards, you could type true as well. Uh, so this is your bold and this is your true. Or, and your italicized, sorry. Now, if you don't care about those, you want to leave them empty you can just either leave it. So like this, it's not going to be bold. It's not going to be italicized, but I just want mine to be bold. So I'm going to type true right here. All right. Now we have our font object. Um, and now we need to render some font. So the next thing we need to do is we're going to go in our redraw game window function. And we're just going to do text here. It's a new variable. We're going to set it equal to font. So the variable that we just created here dot render. Now what this is doing exactly what it says is going to be rendering new text so that it's ready to be put onto the screen. Pretty much the way this works is you put a string in here um, with like a color and stuff, and then it's going to create a, it's going to turn it into a surface, which you can then blit 
onto the screen. Just like we were blitting an image, we're going to be blitting the, uh, the surface or the text onto the screen. So I'm going to do score colon space plus and then our variable score so that we get it all in one nice string here. Then we need the color or actually we don't need the color. We just need to put one here. Don't ask me why you need to do that. You just need to do that. Put a one here and then we're going to put our color. So in this case, I'm just going to make mine black or maybe we'll make it. Ooh, yeah, I'll make it black. Why not black like that? And then now that we've created the font uh, here, we've rendered it, turned it into a surface. We can now draw it on the screen using the same thing we did for our images. So we're going to do win.blit. We're going to put text in here and then the position. In this case, I'm going to do 390 for the X and simply 10 for the Y. And that should hopefully give it to us in about the top right hand corner of the screen. Now, if I run the program, we get a quick issue here. Must be string not int. Ah, I ran into it. This is the issue here. Sorry. So where we have uh, our score, we just need to put string around it. That's because we can't add an integer to a string. My bad. So go ahead and fix that. We're going to run the program. And there we go. We get score. Uh, it looks pretty good in my opinion. Up in the top right hand corner. You can see when I hit my goblin, it is incremented and it keeps going up. And that's very good. So that's the start of the video. So now let's get into the health bar. So the score is great. Now we want to turn to the health bar portion. So pretty much the way I want the health bar to look, you guys can change it if you want. So I want it to be hovering on top of the goblin. And then I want it to move with the goblin. And then we're just going to have it. So it's going to be all green. And every time you hit him, a section of red is going to fill in or like a section of green is going to go away, if that makes sense. So the first thing we can do actually is if you see we have these uh, red boxes around our characters, we can go ahead and get rid of those for right now because we were just using them in the other videos uh, to check the hitbox of our characters. So to get rid of those, uh, wherever we have our draw method, so this guy is in my enemy here, I'm just going to comment it out in case I want to use it later. And then where's our player? He's up here. We can comment that out as well. So that way we're not going to see those ugly red boxes on our screen floating around. And now the next step is we're going to draw our health bar. So to do this, I'm pretty much just going to use two rectangles and we need to change something, but I'm going to do that in a second. So to, to draw two rectangles, we do the same thing we were doing before. We're just going to do high game dot draw dot rect. We're going to start with the window and the color. The first rectangle we're going to draw is going to be green like that, or it's going to be red. Sorry. And then we're going to do, uh, our rects, which is going to be equal to our hitbox. Now, if I just use the X and Y of the character, you remember it's different than the hitbox coordinate. So we're just going to use our hitbox. Um, just copy this down. We're going to do self dot hitbox like this. The first coordinate, which is going to be our hitbox X, which we already found would be the closest to where our character actually is. Self dot hitbox the Y. And then we are going to do we're going to have to move this one up, remember, because if we just do the, the Y, then it's going to be drawing underneath because it's the top left coordinate. So we're going to just move this up by like, let's say 20 pixels maybe. And then we need our width and our height. Now our width is going to be set by us. I'm just going to make it 50. And the height, again, is going to be set by us. It's going to be about 10. Now I'm just going to copy all this like that. I'm going to paste it down below. And I'm going to change this color to green. And then we're going to move to the next step. Uh, so we can change the green in this hitbox and you'll see how we do that. The way we're going to do is just by changing the width of it so that it moves to the left. Um, yeah, hopefully that makes sense. Now, before we can move on any further, we need to create two new uh, attributes for our enemy in here. So to do this, we're just going to, we're going to do the first one's going to be health. So obviously if we're using a health bar, we're going to need to keep track of the health on our character. I'm going to give my character a health of 10. Uh, it doesn't really matter what you give it um, up to you really. And we're going to do self dot visible here. Now you'll see why we're going to do this in the near the end of the video, but pretty much we're going to say once he's, his health is done, we're going to make him invisible and then we're going to delete him so that we no longer see him on the screen because obviously if he has no health, then he shouldn't be alive. He shouldn't be on the screen or we can play some animation of him like falling over or whatever you guys want to do with that. Now we're going to go down here and we're going to say once he gets hit, well, that means we're going to have to reduce his health. So we're going to subtract one from his health. But the thing is, what if his health is already zero? So we need to first check that. We have to say if self dot health is greater than zero, 
then we're going to subtract one from health. Otherwise, we are simply going to set him to not visible anymore. Self dot visible equals false. And let me make sure I made this true. Oops, we need to make this true. Otherwise, this isn't going to work and he's not going to be seen right away. So set that to true. Sorry. Now, one last thing uh, in our draw method here, we only want to draw our character if he's visible, right? So underneath this self dot move here, it's going to go and we're going to say if self dot visible. So if our character is visible, then we will draw him onto the screen and we will draw his hitbox. Otherwise, we're not going to bother drawing him. Pretty straightforward there. All right. So now we have our two rectangles and I'm going to show you what happens if I run the probe. So go ahead. We'll save that. Uh, oops. Pi game <laughs> is not defined. Just a typo there. Fix that. Now we can run the program and you can see that nothing is showing up above our character or actually we have the green bar showing up. But if I hit my character, you can see it's not turning red. Now that's because I haven't changed the uh, health bar at all, right? So once we hit him, we need to modify the health bar in some way so that it looks like it's going down. So we're going to do that now. All right. So first of all, let's just change this green actually, because it's actually really difficult to see on our green background. It's going to make it a bit of a darker green. Hopefully that'll help us see it a bit. Um, and now we're going to go to our width. So our width is this third uh, thing in the rectangle here. Now we're not going to bother changing this one because this is going to be the red back, uh, the background and the green is going to be what's moving slowly down on it. Right. And now we're going to say, we're going to have to subtract from this width. It's a little bit complex, but try to follow along. It's going to do 50 minus and all the brackets I do here are very important just for order of operations. Uh, and now what we're going to do is we're going to find the, for like how much we need to move it down each time it gets hit. So to do this, we're going to do 50 divided by 10, which is going to give us an answer of five. Um, but I'm just going to leave it like this uh, so you can see it right now. So 50 divided by 10 in brackets again, multiplied by, and now we're going to do another set of brackets, 10, because this is the overall health that we're going to start with, subtract our, our health now, like that. So now what's going to happen is we're going to get five, right? So I'll put five in here now so it makes more sense. Five, we don't need the brackets there. We're going to multiply it by 10 minus self.health. So now when we do that, I'll give you a quick example here. If our health is 10, that means we have 10 minus 10, which gives us zero and five times zero is zero. So 50 minus zero gives us a full health bar. If our health is nine, meaning we've been hit one time, we're gonna have 10 minus nine equals one, one times five, 50 minus five, that gives us 45, which now gives us a nine out of 10 for the health bar. Uh, so we'll illustrate this just by running the program. Now we can see we have a little darker green here. It's easier to see. And as we hit our character, you can see his health bar diminishes and it keeps going down until eventually we get to the point where he has no more health left. Now, this is a slight glitch because we've hit him 10 times. You can hit him one more time. You can see he disappears because he had just a sliver of health left. So if we want to fix this, um, pretty much this just meant he had to get hit 11 times before he died. Uh, it's pretty easy. All you have to do is just change his health to nine and then everything will work there. But then you have to change this to like 4.75, I think. Um, anyways, that's been the tutorial for today. We've gone over the hitbox and we've gone over the score. Some pretty useful things. You'd be surprised how many times you want to use something like this hitbox. Maybe even if, if it's just for uh, like counting down the time, like say you have a game and it takes 30 seconds to run like one round, then you'd have up here, you'd have one rectangle as a background and another rectangle that would continually shrink as the time got, uh, right? That's how they do loading bars pretty much. If you remember that like Windows Vista or like Windows 7 loading bar where you have the bar here and it slowly just moves down or slowly moves up, that's how they do it with the little rectangles, uh, maybe a bit more advanced, but yeah. So if you guys enjoyed the tutorial and it helped you out, please help me out by leaving a like and subscribing and I'll see you again in the next video.